So, uh, very good morning everyone. So, this is uh, all about open printing which we are going to discuss today. So, before, before we start, uh, just tell me uh, how many of you have printed your boarding passes while, while coming over here? See, it is almost 50 percent of the population. So, that is why printing is still important. Even though we talk about digitization uh, documents in our mobile or uh, soft copies or drives and all, but still we print to print our boarding passes or something else. So, you know what? This is because of open printing that you are able to print in Linux. So, that is the importance of printing in today's life, ok. So, uh, thank you all for uh, joining this session uh, this morning. I hope uh, you had a wonderful sleep last night after your long flights, ok. To start up, uh, we will, we will uh, take this out in more of a discussion format. So, we, we before going to the discussion, we would like to uh, show you what exactly is uh, print doing today or where exactly are we today. So, once we because print is a very very you know concentrated technology and very few people work on in this area it is very much concentrated. So, we uh, even though it is we all agree to it that is it is very important. So, we plan to show you how it is today, how it is working today and then we discuss about the challenges what we can work together or to collaborate. Uh, myself a week. I am the uh, program manager of open printing and uh, on my personal front I work for Lexmark for the last 11 years in the printing industry uh, in India and he is still Cam Peter, he leads the open yes, printing. Yes, I am the leader of the open printing project. Open printing was founded in back in 2001 and since then I am working on printing. I do everything to make printing just work with Linux and similar operating systems so uh, so that that it, it that we have plug and print and not plug and play so not plug it in and play for hours with the drivers simply plug it in and and you can print so it's not nothing complicated anymore with structured deposition of ink and toner particles on paper substrates it's it's uh, it's simply plug and print, and I hope it will uh, get better. <laughs> Thank you, Till. We have Ritwik also speaking today, and we have Peter from uh, Google uh, joining us for, for on behalf of Open Printing. Okay, so we move on to the next slide on what we speak today. So uh, the first thing is, as I told you, that we are going to discuss how printing uh, today is in Linux, or what what we have achieved, or how is it doing. The next thing is. Uh, common print dialog backends, then working with SANE to make IPP scanning a reality. So, once we discuss more, you will get to know what I am speaking of. Uh, the next thing is printer scanner applications. Now, this is going to be the future. So, this, this is what the future looks like. Uh, then some print setup tools and 3D printing without the use of any slicer. So, this is the agenda for today. We quickly move on to the next slide. Okay, so how how do we print today? In today's world, how are we trying to print? See, this is a, this is a web page from Lexmark where we generally need to download our drivers. So to to use a printer which is there in our home, so what have we been doing? We need a driver. So what, what driver communicates with your firmware and and the users and it understands the language of the uh, device. So we need the driver for that company. We need to go to their site. We need to download it from there, right? So, here as example, I have, I have put in uh, Lexmark uh, CX920. So, it gives me and I have put in uh, the Linux OS, it gives me all the drivers that are there, all, all kind of drivers Lexmark. Uh, so, similar is the case for HP or, or any other, uh, you know, printer vendor. So, the next thing is you, you download and install it in your OS and last but not the least, you try to print it. So, you need to follow all these complicated steps. So, so now uh, for example, say you, you want to print something from your hotel from Corinthia and because uh, you forgot to get some print out and there is no one to attend you. So, what you need to do is you need to uh, go to that make, I mean download the driver for that make and install it in your printer. Now, it is a pain, right. 
So, how is printing today? What have we changed? What has open printing done or how is it? So, this is what we have done. So, it is all driverless. You sit back, you enjoy your magazine, you read, do whatever you, you want to. It is a driverless car, it, it, it does things uh, without any user intervention. So, printing today is just like using your thumb drive or, or your camera, you just plug it in, you use it. There is no need to do all the hassles of downloading a driver, installing it, using it. It is simply like you have a printer, all modern printers are now driverless printers or driverless scanners. So, you plug it in, you do a control P, your printing works, right. So, this, this is what we have done. This is uh, to, to ease out your pain, to make you, uh, I mean, to help you print uh, easily. So, if you do not believe me, I have a short video to explain it, to give you the proof. Uh, I have a laptop. In this video, I am going to show a laptop which I connected to a network, okay. So, suppose you are connecting your laptop in this network and there are driverless printers in this network. So, how is the OS going to behave or how is it going to behave? So, let us see. Yes, this is by the way Ubuntu Linux where all is already implemented for driverless IPP printing. Okay. So, oh, sorry. If I make it full screen. Okay. This is a CAPS web page. So, somebody, you, who, if you are using printing extensively in Linux, so you know what is a CAPS page. So, this is the web interface of the CAPS, which is the backbone of printing in Linux. So, at this point of time, my CAPS page shows I have only one printer added. So, only one print queue that is HP Office Jet. So, uh, so that is a printer which I already have in my system. So, now I connect it in a network which has wireless printers or sorry, which has driverless printers. So, let us see how it behaves. So, this is just to show you that I have the PPT. So, PPTs are the driver files. I mean, uh, in layman's term, we can term is that the driver files. So, PPDs are something which records all that the printer uh, exposes or the printer has. Okay, so it's I had only one print queue as I showed in the previous page, and I have the driver file for that. There is nothing else. So now I have connected to the laptop. Uh, sorry, I have connected my laptop in a network where there are driverless printers. Right. So in this thing, if you go to LibreOffice, uh, I just read a Control P, and I see only one printer. Okay. Now what I am doing is. I am connecting it to the network which has driverless printer. So, it is connected to the network now. If, if you see uh, it on the top corner, so it is showing Ethernet. So, at this point of time, what you do is you want to print something. So, you are in LibreOffice, you are doing control P. See the difference. I did nothing, I did not go to the website, I did not download, download anything, I did not install anything. I simply connected it to the network having driverless printers. I went to LibreOffice, I did a control P. It gives me the list of the printers which supports driverless printing. So, that is what we, we have achieved in open printing today. So, <coughs> you, do, you do not need to think of anything else. So, these are the models which support driverless. What I, I need to do now is I need to select a particular printer with which I want to print. Here I select this particular model MX611. I, 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 I just fired the print and see it started printing. See the notification on the top. You go to the jobs page of CUPS. It shows still uh, the printing is in process. Printing completed. 
So don't worry if you forgot to print anything and you have a printer lying next to you. If it's that if if it's a modern printer, if it supports driverless, you can you can uh, simply print out of it. Okay. So. Uh, Where is the slide share mode? Just a second. Uh, I think we need to maximize this. Where is the next? Okay. So that was how printing is in today's world. Now I hand it over to uh, Till uh, to have a short discussion on uh, what all things we are doing for open printing, how we are supporting enterprises and uh, what all things we do, okay. So before that I need to make it a full screen. Okay. Yes, now we go to the wonderful world of open printing, which I am leading since 2001 and we do a lot of uh, different things and it is the following. First of all, we do everything to make printing just work. We, we, uh, we implement uh, printing standards, we work out architectures for integration of printing in uh, free operating systems, Linux, Unix alike operating systems. And we work very closely together with the PWG the Printer Working Group. This is an organization, a consortium of printer manufacturers and also software, uh, software and operating system vendors who work out standards for printing. All, most, of, most important of all is IPP, the Internet Printing Protocol. It get, got started back in the late 90, nine in the late 90th of the, of the last century <coughs> and with the turn of the century CUPS came up and so uh, IPP was implemented in free software and beginning from this I, en ent I entered the, the, uh, the, 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 I entered the business and uh, made CUPS getting into the Linux distributions. And so we have IPP now, and this got the st really the standard. Every, every non-CUPS printing system went away with the time. CUPS is the only maintained printing system. It's maintained by Michael Sweet at Apple. And, and for everything which Apple does not need, I'm the responsible with the open printing project. And IPP, the PWG has also thought about multifunction devices. These thing is where you have a printer and a scanner in one. It gets, it, it, it gets nearly more common than, print, than uh, simple single function printers nowadays. You see much more in the offices and also at the homes, these ones which have printer and scanner all in one. And, this, and so the, the PWG has worked out the internet printing protocol and started naturally for printing, but they have also worked out the standard nowadays for the scanner in the multifunction devices. So we have IPP driverless scanning. And this is also a free and open standard, part of the part of the IPP. And by the way, all the standards worked out by the printing working group are free and open standards. So we have all specifications. So for, for every standard which the PWG is, 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 is doing. And so I can easily see the IPP has, uh, the PWG has made something, something interesting. So 
I line it up for the Google Summer of Code and in the next Google Summer of Code it will be turned to reality for us Linux and Unix and non-Mac OS X users. And yes, this is re really also an important part of open printing that due to the lack of, of being attractive for, for volunteer contributors, we have started to every year participate in the Google Summer of Code. Avik is recruiting students ev 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 every year on in Indian universities and they do a lot of work for us and many also stay with our project so and continue working in open printing with us. And so in the next and, and so it next up for the 2020 Google Summer of Code will be IPP driverless scanning. And we will talk more about IPP driverless scanning later. And one important thing is Apple has overtaken Mike Sweet and Cups many, many years ago to have a printing environment environment for Mac OS X. But CUPS was an integrated complete solution for printing in Unix-like operating systems. But Apple for Mac OS X, they have decided to do some parts in a proprietary way, the filters for turning the PDF input data into the printer's native language Apple has decided to do this all proprietary and not using the free filters which come with which came with the original cups. So and Apple did not want to maintain any more these filters which they don't use anyway and so they have passed them over to me to open printing and I have founded the cups filters project maintaining once these filters developing them in, uh, uh, to add new standards, new, p new, new page description languages, and to make them ma to, to uh, make them uh, easy, more easily maintainable, and everything which, ha which has to be done, and also the cup stem on itself, which formerly with its own protocol nicely. Uh, broadcasted shared printers and the client cups daemons automatically uh, uh, added them to their to their local print queues. S so uh, it, at a certain point of time, cups D was the cups daemon was switched over to the standard DNSSD. Nice thing we follow the standards, but they did not make on the client <coughs> side the print uh, picking up picking up the printers which are broadcasted by a server via D DNSSD. And so I introduced CUPS BrowseD also in the CUPS filters project to overcome this uh, disappearing feature in CUPS so that the users of Linux are continuously served with the features uh, they are used to. And But nowadays CUPS is picking up printers from servers via DNSSD again. But CUPS BrowseD is still there. I will not stop it. CUPS BrowseD does it, it in a much more sophisticated way. It can cluster printers. CUPS formerly could do it too, but nowadays not anymore. It can cluster printers. It can even cluster different printers and, and decide by the job properties to which printer to send the job. Uh, also a nicely done by a Google Summer of Code student and it can and it also and you can also put in a, a lot of nice filters so that if, if you have 10,000 printers in your network you can make cups browse the only listing the printers which are interesting to you and yes and and then we have the Fumatic database. It was it was even created be back before 2000 by another guy, 
But when I started to work full time on printing, the, uh, in in starting in 2000 at, at Mandrake Soft in Paris, this distribution, uh, this renamed later to Mandriva, but now it, it does not exist anymore. There, I discovered uh, the, this database. It was called linuxprinting.org that time. And as the owner did not have time for it anymore, he has passed it over to me and I've continued uh, maintaining it. It's called Fumatic. This strange name comes from the case that in former times there were several printing environments. There was LPD, LPING, CAPS, PDQ, PPR, and so on. And this database supported all of them, and, and it had some scripts which were called LPD OMATIC, LPING OMATIC, CAPS OMATIC, and so on. And so the guy who has started that has simply called it FUMATIC, this project. Therefore, we have this name. But nowadays, it only supports CUPS as a printing system, as the, all the other printing systems disappeared. So we don't, do not need to put work in that anymore. And the, the thing what the Fumatic database is, it's a database of printers, and it tells which printers wor ha work how well with Linux and which driver you, you have to use for it and how to use this driver. There, back in the, in the 2000s, there was no driverless printing. There was no automatic printer setup. The user needed a place to look up. How, how can I make my printer work? Or which printer can I buy uh, th so that it works with Linux? And so he looked up in this database, and if someone complained about printing does not work, I told him, look up in this database. There you can see which printer works and how. And I continued the development, entered new printers, and I also uh, made it more sophisticated, integrated it in distributions, so that the distributions could automatically set up printers with the driver. And it worked really nicely, and, and on, uh, on every conference people told, it was easy to set up my printer. Thank you very much. <laughs> you did great work, and so <laughs> on. And so this is the Fumatic database. It still exists, and some manufacturers like Lexmark and Rico are uploading printer entries and PPD files for PostScript printers. So th their PPD files get this way in the distributions, and also people find their printers by this database. And nowadays, you will less and less have to look up in the database as we get the driverless IPP printing so that the printer tells you by itself or tells your computer by itself what to do and the computer does, do, does it for you. And, and then rather new in open printing is the common print dialogue backends project and this project Years ago, we, we saw the problem that the print dialogues of applications are inconsistent and do not display all the settings which you can have on the printer, even if the driver has these settings. And so we, are, we were searching for making the print dialog better. And in the beginning, we started with a GUI expert to make a common print dialog, a dialog for all the... All the Graphic, graphics, uh, graphical toolkits, but this geo, uh, but this common print dialog project, it did not work out. It took, uh, we, we did not have much manpower. We worked with Google Summer of Code students and so, and we we did also did not get enough funding, so that we uh, so that we could uh, perhaps recruit someone for that, and it. And, and so we did not, did not succeed to finish it. And later on, we looked back and, uh, at this, and we wanted to improve the, the print dialog, and we came to another idea, which is the common print dialog backends, which means the GUI toolkits, they keep their print dialogs, but 
they do not directly talk with CUPS or any other print technology. They talk with, by DBUS with certain backend, one for each printer uh, technology, so that the backend can be develop developed in a faster pace than the GUI. And also by, by ba adding backends, you can quickly add new printer uh, technologies to the to the print dialogues, for example, Google Cloud Print, or if some someone else creates a print technology like Google Cloud Print, a network print te technology, so we can tell him simply put up uh, such a backend, and everything in Linux will support your your technology. This uh, and Ritwick will talk. Uh, will will t tell more details about this. Right, so uh, I guess this is the next slide, Dr. Ward. Right. Yeah. Yes. So uh, before we uh, move on to the next slide, uh, so I'd just like to hear from you. So about your experiences or wh what do you think about, I mean, any problems uh, or any, any other points that you want to discuss or uh, you feel like uh, something could have been done to make printing uh, better, uh, I mean, improve printing or something of that sort. So I, th I uh, open it up to the audience for a discussion before we go on to the next slide. So if you can share your experiences or uh, any problems that you use or anything. Like you might think like, okay, if print would have worked like this, I say something, it prints, I would have been happy. So anything. By the way, uh, for those who have, I couldn't deliver the pens, there are some open printing pens you can collect, or collect from the back, okay. So yeah, so any magic wand that we, we can use to convert printing into something. No one has to say anything, no one has any complaint about printing. So it's working. <laughs> By what, the way. It's working for you? By the way, if, if printing is not working in Ubuntu, he is the culprit. <laughs> take, take his mail ID, take his phone number, give him a call, tell, I am using Ubuntu, print is not working, what have you done? You know that, that why we have this nice meeting and all the people here all together was because some guy uh, uh, many, many years ago was not able to print. Okay, so uh, Ritwik, I hand it over to you. Peter, if you can take the notes on behalf of Ritwik, will that be fine with you? Yeah, it's it's her pad. Huh? Yeah, real time, or maybe you can uh, do it afterwards as well, so you can put that gap. Okay, so I hand over the microphone to Ritwik. Uh, by the way, guys, uh, there are some guys who have. Uh, so that's why I'm using this laptop. Many couldn't come over here, but they wanted to uh, call in. So we have set it up for them. So if we can present it from this laptop. Uh, I'm Ritwik. Is this working? Yeah. Hi, I'm Ritwik. Uh, I worked with Open Printing as a Google Summer of Code student for two years, 2017 and 2018. Uh, now I'm currently working at Amazon, but I'm still continuing with Open Printing more of an, uh, as a hobby. Uh, in my in 2017, uh, Open Printing started the Common Print Dialog backend project with a couple of other Google Summer of Code students. So, 
the basic idea of op a common print dialog is to provide a unified hassle-free printing experience across all Linux, like no, irrespective of the distribution, uh, irrespective of the printing technology that the printer uses, uh, common print dialog wants to, uh, wants the experience to be uh, same throughout the li uh, throughout Linux, and it has to be hassle-free. Like you shouldn't bother with uh, installing the printer drivers or setting up the printer. Okay. Uh, so we want uh, the all common print dialog also wants to decouple print technologies uh, like like Cups, IPP, Google Cloud Print from the GUI toolkits like. Qt or uh, GTK so that uh, application developers do not have to bother with keeping up with the developments of the printing technologies. And printing technologies can, uh, they evolve much faster than GUI toolkits. Like the release cycles are much quicker with CUPS or IPP than it is with Qt or GTK. So the design we came up with this was to provide front end libraries for two of the most widely used tool, uh, toolkits out there, Qt and GTK. And uh, we have to, uh, we wanted to provide a backend libraries for uh, basically everyone else, like uh, every application developer. So the way we implemented it, uh, it is uh, the GUI toolkit is uh, the GUI toolkit has a uh, print dialog, acts as a front end, and every print technology has a backend. Like Cups has its own backend, Google Cloud Print has its own backend, and uh, the toolkit ha communicates with those backends via Dbus. Uh, we have backends available for Cups and GCP as of right now. Uh, in if a user, let's say, if he's using a Cups a regular Cups printer and he uh, installed Cups backend and the printer is working, and so, uh, if the user decides to buy a Google Cloud Printer, all he has to do is install the respective backend, and the printer will work. Uh, no, nothing has to be changed on the front end side. The app developers do not have to s explicitly support Google Cloud Print. All, he has, all the user has to do is install the common print dialog backend that is relevant to that printer technology, and it will work. And backends can also be provided with a packaging, uh, sandbox packaging system like Ubuntu Snap Store. So you don't even have to tinker around with make scripts or anything, you can just download a snap for your printer from the snap store and it will start working. So how does it work? Basically, uh, whenever we make the print dialog live, the backend, each of its, ba each backend, like the Cups backend and the Google cl uh, Cloud Print backend, it supplies its printers uh, as a Dbus messages. Uh, the user, uh, the uh, the printers are listed in the dialog. Then the user selects the printer. Then the Dbus, the uh, the backend will send all the available print options for that printer via Dbus. User selects those options and sets like uh, whatever print job he wants to print, and he prints it. The dialog passes the options to the printer, and the job gets done. So. Uh, the major challenges we face today are integration, integration, and integration. Because uh, the main idea of Google, uh, uh, sorry, common print dialog backend is to provide a unified experience to all applications and all distributions. But in order for that to work, we need the major toolkits to uh, accept a common print dialog backend into their toolkits so that the application developers can use that toolkit. We created a proof of concept uh, dialog for Qt, but it got uh, rejected the, uh, because we used QML and not QWidgets. And then we, when we re-implemented re it using QWidgets uh, and posted it on the mailing list, there was virtually no response. Uh, so we need uh, help from you guys if you can, if you know how to, how we can fasten this up and how we can get this uh, common print dialog backend project into any of the major toolkits, that would be a great help. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, as the part of the project, you like define the API between the user interface and the backend? 
Yes. So it's uh, there is some specification, yes, uh, how to communicate between backend and user interface. Yeah, uh, the specification is basically the format of the debug message that you have to send that for the uh, for the backend to understand. Okay, how is it uh, rela related to IVP? I mean, all these properties which is uh, queried from the printer, uh, you know, the, the properties of the printer, yes, the features. Yes. That are translated into this format, like, uh, and post on the bus. Yeah. So the, the, the dialogue will know what should show to, to the user, yes? Yeah, we do have a helper package that takes whatever options you have from the dialogue and converts it into debus messages and send it to the, the corresponding backend. We do that for you. Okay. So, uh, what's the problem here? I mean, uh, but it requires debus, yes, in general. Yeah. The debus will be uh, set up by the dialogue itself. You don't have to explicitly create a debus. Okay. I'm the only problem here maybe that maybe not uh, not all toolkits will will want to add uh, like a debus yes uh, like a, as a dependency yeah. okay but so like this project has two parts one is this user in interface on the top and the backends on the yeah. at the bottom yes yeah the backend support. The common print dialog has those two parts. The common print dialog backends is just the backend part. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? No. Uh, do, do you have some web page with, with, with the specification? Sorry? Do you have some web page with specification how the communication is, is done? Yeah, you can uh, check on to open printing website. We listed all the uh, summer of code projects there and each project has its own uh, description as to how it works uh, okay so you have also backend uh, ba uh, so sorry backend for cups yes 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 we have a new we are making a new website it is uh, it will be uh, sorry to interrupt uh, so I, I forgot to mention you the rules so somebody who has a question needs to speak up so that that's captured on the camera so I'm sorry for that. I, I didn't mention it to you earlier. So to still, if you can uh, yes. stand up so that you can face yes. the camera. Yes, it. Uh, we will have a new website at Open Printing. It's currently worked on. It is nearly completed, and and this will also uh, this will contain pages for all the sub projects of Open Printing, and it will also uh, contain all information about the common point dialogue backends. Uh, any other questions? Great, uh, I'll pass it to Avik to continue the talk from here. Okay, uh, so you, you, are tri you are trying to show the demo, right? I so you want? So okay, fine. Okay, thanks, Ritwik. Uh, yeah, so uh, from the morning, I have been talking a lot about driverless printing, IPP printing, or uh, internet printing protocol, and all these things. So how do you guys think that this is working? So is there a magic going on that you connect your printer, or how, how actually is it working? So anyone, any idea about how, how this can work? Or, or if you think that the, if this could have been done from the firmware or from the OS, uh, then uh, it will work out. So I'll, I'll tell you typically how, how it happens, what, what actually is a driver doing. So driver is having an UI, right? So it lists, it is listing the options what a printer can support. So if I am the manufacturer of the printer, I know what all features I have provided in my printer whether my printer is a color printer or a black and white printer, whether it supports uh, both side printing, this and that. So being the manufacturer, I know what my printer supports. 
So accordingly, I have put it up in the UI, in the driver UI that these are the features. And being the manufacturer, I know what all commands uh, will my printer react to. F say for example, in my UI, I show print color. So user chooses color. So that's all on the UI. And the driver knows what command it needs to send to the firmware. So that can be, uh, uh, so each, each company has its own set of commands, so those are confidential commands and ways. So that is simply what the driver is doing. Driver is nothing else but that, rather than uh, some medium to talk to the farmer. So it takes a user's input, converts it to the specific command which the farmer understand, gets a job done from the farmer. I mean, the farmer is in turn talking to the hardware and the response is coming back to the UI. So for example, if you are trying to do a scan, you send a set of commands, to, I mean, based on what the user has selected and you get a raw, raw data. So it's all binary 1010. So you get the raw data and from the driver, you interpolate that and show it in the UI. So that's, that's what actually uh, is the function of a driver. So that's what the driver is doing. So now I talk about how, how this is all uh, driverless or how, how it is working. Okay. This is my, uh, this is my host. Okay. So what I do is I have connected my laptop to the network where I have multiple printers which support driverless. Now, uh, during the starting of the session, I showed you the video of uh, how it is working. So, what actually is going on at the background, I am explaining it in this slide. So, at first, what I do is, I do an MDNS query. So, my host is doing an MDNS query, okay, to all, I mean, to everything in the network. The printers respond back to that MDNS query saying whether it supports driverless printing or not, okay. So, so I do a MDNS query in the network. All the printers respond to me, which is the host, saying if I, if I, if I support driverless with the, with the URI of the printer, okay. So, any questions till this point? So I need to know which all printers support driverless. That's that's what I need to know. So do you think it could have been done in a better way to understand which all supports driverless printing? Apart from MDNS, do you can you think of any other technology or anything else? No. Okay. So this is the point when I get the list and I show it in the UI. If you remember in my demo when I did a control P after connecting my printer to the network having the driverless printers, it, it showed me the list of printers, right? In, in the first time, first time it was only one printer, second, the next time it was a list of printers. So this is how I am getting the list. Based on the response, I list it out in the UI, okay? So next thing is you need to choose your printer from which you want to print. You have got a list of 10 printers which supports driverless. Being the user, I know from which printer I need to uh, choose, I mean I need to print whether it's A, B, C, D, E, F, I select printer B. In my video, I did choose a specific Lexmark printer MX611, so say suppose that is my printer B. So in number 2, I am selecting the printer. What happens at the background? So let's see. At this point in time, another query is sent to that specific printer. Now at this point of time, it's not a generic MDNS or generic uh, query. It's, it's specific to that particular printer which I am trying to print. It's a give job attributes. What is that? So see, these are the standards. These are certain standards which have been set up by PWG. So PWG has given the instructions. So PWG is a group which comprises of uh, printer uh, manufacturers, uh, people uh, who decide the future of printing, uh, okay, and IPT guys and everyone. So, so they have 
sit together and decided on some standards which should be sent and how the printer should respond. So when a driverless printer firmware gets a query like job attributes, get job attributes, that means the firmware knows it needs to respond back with the list of things it supports, okay. So here, here uh, we are doing a get job attributes via IPP and the printer firmware understands what the meaning of get job attributes. So it will respond back to the host saying, well, I support these many things, I support 10 things or 11 things or 12 things, okay. So now what I have done is, I have received the, I mean I did a job print job attributes uh, query and the printer returned back with the set of features it supports. It's the job of the host, host means over here the OS or, or uh, I mean the print architecture to parse those data and show it up in the UI, sh show it, show all the features in the UI, okay. So based upon the response which I have received from the printer, I parse it and I show all the details in front of the, uh, I mean in, uh, in the UI in front of the user. Now the user is free to choose any settings and print out of it. This is how the entire driverless print gamut is working. I, I query to all the printers in the network, hey you support driverless. So those all who support driverless raises their hand, gives the information to the host, host understands okay these are the printers which support driverless that list is shown in the UI to the user, user selects a printer, now then I specifically query that printer, I hammer that printer saying boss give me the list of the attributes which you support, printer gives me back that data and I show it in the UI, now the user is free to choose uh, whatever they want and print out of it. So it's as simple as that how driverless printing is working, okay. So any, anything you want to discuss at this point in time or you think something could have been done in a better way or, or uh, from the technical perspective uh, things would have been simpler uh, using some other technology or something else. So I mean so the, the, this is called IPP everywhere, yes? This is IPP everywhere. Okay, the standard. Do you know how, what's the percentage of printers on the market which support this? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, so I wear two hats. When I am in the open, when I am wearing the open printing hat, I try to promote driverless printing. You should go driverless, you should go driverless. When I am wearing a Lexmark hat or the printing manufacturer hat, so the actual fact is all modern printers are now driverless. So they have the driverless capability. But does that mean, uh, but what about our uh, older models? Now there are certain formats in which this, this additional things can be incorporated or that can be converted to a driverless printer. So it's a way how the manufacturer has designed. So I can say that any new printer that's coming up in the market is driverless printer. I mean most of the printers, I'm not sure about all the vendors, but the major vendors, the printer and printing vendors are doing it. And even they are converting their old uh, firmware uh, into a driverless one. Because uh, if, you, if you see uh, in Apple, Apple is strongly promoting to use driverless print and driverless scan. So uh, because in, after a few days, uh, the driver support will not be there. So you will not be able to use a driver a PPD or uh, CUPS is going to disable that. So, we want everyone to go into driverless because it's it's a e, it's easier to use. In Linux, I mean, at least I can speak of Ubuntu. You can do driverless printing; uh, it is it's working smoothly. In case you are having a printer and you see that this is not working, you can check with the manufacturer and check for the latest firmware because uh, manufacturers have started rolling out their new firmwares to enable the older printers uh, giving them support for uh, driverless printing, okay. So you can check in their pages and uh, 
if it is not, might be your printer is very old and it is not possible to give the driverless support there. Can you define very old? What sort of time ranges, what, what, what sort of years was the transition start happening and how? Uh, 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 Kate, uh, that is uh, that's a tricky question in fact and, rather, rather, and, and a good question altogether. Uh, from Lexmark perspective, I can, I can tell that uh, the printers which were there in the market, I mean last uh, five, six years or seven years, all has driverless support or they are getting the driverless support. But exact, uh, if, you, if for other, other manufacturer, probably they will be the good person to say that from which year they can provide that support. But uh, typically speaking, printers released in the market uh, in the last four, five years should be capable of handling it out. Yes, when you are buying a pointer, you should look for whether this pointer is capable of pointing from a phone, from iPhone, uh, Android, and so on. Usually, this, this is implemented by driverless pointing. For iPhones especially, it is AirPoint. And Linux supports all the, all the four known driverless IPP standards including AirPoint, and so an, Air, an AirPoint pointer points also from Linux with driverless IPP pointing. So uh, in case you need to go get into more details on the call stacks or what exactly is happening, I have a document which gives you the full explanation uh, with, the, with the network traces and, uh, and how the passings are done or what data exactly is returned. Just uh, get in touch with me. I have my email ID at the last of the slide, end of the slide. So just drop me a mail. I can send you that data which you can refer. Okay. So this is a good news about printing, but there is a bad news. Don't worry. <laughs> this is not the case with scanning. So you, I have shown you or explained you how smooth is it to print, but at the same time, I'm very sorry to say, we do not have anything similar in scanning. So that is a problem. That is where we need more collaboration, more contributions to make scanning at par with printing now. Okay? So for, for scanning, uh, still we are following the age old process of driver installation. You need to go to the uh, manufacturer side, download the scan driver, install it, use it, and yet, so it is a pain. So, so that is what we wanted to discuss more. Uh, we want contributions in that area where scanning and printing can come together so and uh, use the best out of the IPP technologies and the standards that uh, PWG has uh, provided us. Okay. So as I have already explained, IPP scanning infrastructure is not in place today. We need to have it. That is very much required. Okay. Standards are already defined by PWG. So somebody just needs to develop and work on it. PWG has given the instructions or set up the standards like this is what needs to be done, this is what needs to be done, like uh, how the printing was, uh, IPP printing was developed. So we need collaboration. As I said that printing is a very niche uh, technology. We have very few people working on printing. I mean, very few contributors. So, uh, from open printing perspective, uh, our main goal as of now uh, is to is to expand this horizon, is to have more contributions. We we want open printing to grow. We want more contributions in that area. And and I keep on saying uh, this to everyone: if you are op if you are doing something in open printing, if you are contributing it to open printing, it goes goes to the U uh, OS code the next day. And feel happy, whoever uses printing in, uh, in Linux or in Ubuntu uses your code to print. So that is what uh, you are doing, you are helping somebody. <laughs> Without your contribution, he could not have printed a, a you know, vital document or something of that sort. <laughs> okay. So uh, as I said that this is a strong collaboration, so driverless printing or scanning is a strong collaboration between the you know, farmer and the, and the software. So both need to work together. If we have our software architecture, if we have our, uh, you know, 
everything set up uh, without the proper firmware, we will not be able to do it. There, will, there should be a strong handshaking, right? Without that handshaking, it's not possible. So at the same time, printing companies or vendors need to come up with the proper firmware, which, which will support these standards. Uh, this probably I have already discussed, like uh, SANE and open printing, SANE community and the open printing needs to collaborate or work together. Because they, they are the persons who know scanning best. We are print guys, they are the scan guys, they know it much better than us. So they can develop it for, I mean quickly, so we need to collaborate. So that is, uh, that is one thing which we are trying to do, I mean uh, which we have started recently. Like we'll try to, uh, you know, have more discussions, more, uh, you know, talks with them and try to bring them together. If, uh, I mean, I will, we will surely require Kate's help and we are already discussing it with her. So if we can have uh, more, uh, you know, collaboration on that, please. Otherwise, print will move ahead and scan will still lag behind, which we do not want. Uh, so what are we aiming? I mean, what we think should uh, it? I mean, how it should work? It's like like a printer and IPP scanner, uh, it, you know, appears uh, as an IPP server in the network with standard ports as uh, 631. So it will be uh, it will be like you have a printer. I mean, like for print, we had an URI. Similarly, for scan also, there will be an URI where the host will communicate with the printer using that URI and. Uh, other IPP, you know, other IPP commands or uh, ways of communicating with the printer. A multifunction device has uh, both resources, which is URI. So it's a, like it has a print URI and it has a scan URI. So that's the interface using which you communicate with your printer. Uh, this uh, also I have discussed, like. Uh, these are the things which would help us in scanning, okay. So till this point of time, any, any, any items of discussion or, or you think we can do something to make it better or, uh, you know, to help it out or to, uh, dev I mean, uh, to uh, make the delivery process quicker or the development process quicker. Are there uh, any manufacturers that have firmware that support this at all, right? Most of them, most of them support uh, ASCAN in Mac. Mm -hmm. So if something is getting supported in Mac, it will not be a very big, uh, very much, uh, you know, too much of heavy task uh, to support it here. But right now, uh, I guess uh, not, it's fully supported. Till you want to yes, add anything? Yes, the the PWG, they have worked out, developed the IPP scanning standard, but as, fast, as far as I know, there are no scanners yet, no multifunction printers yet, which support this standard. But I think it's a question of time when it will start that manufacturers will support it. So the Apple standard is not the IPP standard? Yeah, the question was, uh, so the Apple standard is not the IPP yes, standard? I don't, yes, I don't know what exactly the Apple Air scanned standard is. I know that Apple Air print is IPP driverless printing, but I don't know whether, I, IP, whether Apple Air scan is also IPP driverless scanning. Okay, so uh, any other questions? Yeah. So, uh, uh, can you please stand up? So yep. they just wanted to capture okay. the video. So, uh, uh, forgive me for a dumb question, but uh, so is uh, cups supporting the IPP scanning, right? Uh, the IPP printing, and can bridge the IP, uh, can bridge the older printer to IPP standard. Is that right? If you have a driver uh, for a printer, for an older printer, and they can have an interface, an IPP interface on the network using CUPS. Is that true? 
Yes, CUPS completely supports I IPP driverless printing so that if you, if you have devices on the network which support IPP driverless printing, uh, they will be listed by CUPS and you, you can print on them. But I can also ex expose uh, an older printer using CUPS to the network as an IPP printer, can I? Ah, uh, yes. This exposing an older printer like an IPP printer, which by itself is not IPP, this, uh, this is the subject of the uh, printer applications, which will be the future form of printer drivers. Okay, so... Yes, this will be a, a further sub subsession of, of this uh, microconference. So can the uh, scanning go a similar way? Can yes, we? yes. We are planning to do scanning the same way. So for the, pro for the scanners that don't support yes, IPP? Yes, yes. Okay. We plan on the next Google Summer of Code that a student will make a scanner application out of SANE so that if you have a SANE driver that it, the, the scanner can be represented also as an IPP driverless scanner emulated on the local machine. And that's uh, going to be through, through, uh, through CUPS? No, no. C CUPS is not involved in that. So they, whatever implementation for IPP is in CUPS is not going to be... Perhaps the CUPS library will be used to implement I IPP, but uh, the, CUPS, uh, the CUPS dam on this, uh, is not involved in scanning. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Uh, so, do you have, uh, do you know any clients which support IPP scanning? What? Any, because any clients supporting we IPP have, scanning? Yeah, ah, we have no yes, manufacturers. Yes. We, don't, yes. we do not have yet clients. This will be, uh, this will be another subject of a Google Summer of Code <laughs> scheme <laughs> in okay. 2020. <laughs> so, if people wanted to um, see this accelerated before next summer, um, and there was funding dominated for interns through something like Community Bridge or something else. Is there mentors around to help make some of this stuff work out in the community if we can find interns through the, you know, different time periods? It would we be great if you could find in interns too. Uh, the more we oh. get, the better uh, it will be. Yeah, uh, for scanning, like uh, when we started off uh, in GSOC, we even had some projects. So there were a few mentors who wanted to mentor on that. So, uh, but we didn't make much progress because uh, since uh, there were other priority projects, so it, it took a back seat. But I think we can we can have uh, mentors in that area as well, okay. so who would be interested in uh, supporting. So we can work on that. And any of you who is who are there in the room, if you want to uh, help us mentoring a student, uh, please. I mean, we would be happy uh, to work with you all. I mean, one of, of the problem is that for printing we have caps, but what what do we what do we have for scanning? Yes? Same. Yes. That's S same. That's the same protocol or the same standards. Yeah, well, it's a protocol. But what about, about the application for scanning? Yes. Yeah, XN is an application which is commonly used. So same is probably uh, Twine. Uh, so it follows Twine most. No, no, it uh, same really does not follow twain. twain. Sane is something on, on its own. It, it, it consists of a library which is used by the front ends. And this library dynamically links ad other libraries which are the scanner drivers. OK, do we have driver for IPP scanning? Uh, not yet. This is one of our plans. This is on our <laughs> list. Because you know, and if you if you enter as a volunteer, you can pull it e even earlier from the list. <laughs> so you need the mic. Uh, sure. Yeah. Oh. 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 <laughs> so um, I was just wondering, are we looking at are you looking at using sane um, APIs towards the desktop applications, or are we basically creating something like the common printing dialog? a new API that's DBIS based for applications to do the scanning and to do the UI and then basically just have the same code that's existing to support all the old old um, devices but support new driverless scanners through some new daemon or something that that is actually doing the DBIS API for applications. 
Uh, what's the deal there? Do you have yes, any for, for the scanning, our plans are to, to do two parts. One part is the scanner applications. And there will be a special scanner application which contains SANE and all the existing SANE drivers, which is for the legacy scanners. And there will be a SANE driver, a driver for IPP driverless scanning. And so if a SANE installation in the system has this SANE driver for IPP driverless scanning, when you open any scan, a, a scan a dialog, scan UI, SANE usually goes through all its backends, through all its mm -hmm. drivers to find a suitable scanner. And so when SANE hits the IPP driverless scanning driver, this one will find uh, the, the IPP driverless scanners advertised via DNA. DNSSD, and one of them is the scanner application, yeah. and so the scanners are available. Right, yeah. Thank you. Look at. So, uh, <laughs> so the, with the same, there is often the problem that when you open the same dialog on a remote machine, it takes a long while for the, uh, for the for the server side to talk to the scanner to retrieve the printer parameters and all that stuff and the dialogue to come up. It takes sometimes like a minute when it so tries to get it. Is the, uh, is the uh, IPP scanning going to help with that or is it uh, going to be the problem again? You are probably using SANE with its own network protocol. I don't know this network protocol, how efficient it is. If you use IPP driverless scanning, you use the IPP protocol, which works very well with printing already. And we hope uh, that by replacing the, 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 the SANE's own protocol by a standard protocol, that it gets better. Well, the, the, uh, I, I assume that the problem is not with the protocol itself, it's not the network uh, protocol that is um, slow. Uh, the problem is that, uh, in the same architecture where it has to check the printer, connect to the printer, communicate with the printer to give you a list of parameters. So the driver returns with the list of parameters. And uh, I'm just wondering if you're using the same and its architecture, will it also have to first converse and retrieve all the parameters from the printer? And uh, that is going to be the issue again. On the other hand, the yeah, it, it exposes some APIs with which the driver stop, starts talking. So how it works is like uh, uh, the, it, the driver gives, gives a list to the, those APIs, like uh, those extensions, like these are the things I support. So it, that's how same list. And again, all these interactions happen. So maybe in server mode, it's, uh, there is the handshaking is not working properly. Maybe, yeah, and uh, since the, I, I assume that the problem with this uh, slowness is that the driver which returns the printer parameter, uh, the, the scanner parameters first goes and initializes the scanner and that takes a while like to move the motor and things like that and that's why, like it says, okay, I'm in gonna initialize the scanner and then I'll give you the scanner parameters, the resolution, the size and everything. Maybe with IPP that's not gonna be the case, so maybe that's not a question actually. Thank you. Okay, so I think uh, throughout the discussion we have spoken about the last uh, point also. So the host uh, does not need any any device specific info. It it can it can do uh, it can get everything through the IPP request. So everything is taken care of by the IPP by the firmware. So it doesn't need to know about what it supports and what it does not. A driver principally is a piece of software which is specific to the model uh, 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 of hardware which it supports. And if we have driverless, we don't have any kind of such software. We have only general software. And so, uh, so for, the uh, for the driverless printing or scanning, we ask the device for its capabilities because we don't have information about device's capabilities, and the devices always use communication protocols 
both for the co for the for the querying and also for the real job, which are standardized. Uh, what about the format of the document? It's like for printing now. Yes, for printing we have four stand four standardized formats, which are we uh, where at least two of them are required by each of the four uh, IPP driverless printing protocols. And the four, the four standard formats, one is PDF, one is Apple raster, which is the raster format of Apple AirPrint. One is uh, PWG raster which is the standard of IPP everywhere. And one is PCLM, has, has nothing to do with PCL. It's a subset of PDF, which is raster only, which is, for example, also used by the Mobria uh, uh, standard. Postscript is, post post Postscript is out. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. You can use Postscript in, uh, together with IPP printing, but it is not one of the required standard uh, data formats. But as of now, Postscript seems to be the most popular and the most used one. Yes. Po uh, Postscript is also not that reliable. When there are Postscript printers and Windows drivers, there is often more than only the PPD file, but also some hidden fixes to work around the Postscript bugs in the printer. Okay, so uh, so the popularity of uh, open printing seems to be growing uh, bigger and bigger. So recently, to give you a latest news, recently this is being incorporated in Chrome OS. So maybe you can hear it from the horse's mouth. If if uh, Peter, you can you can. Uh, just tell us, uh, tell the audience, like how open printing is being integrated with Chrome OS, or how uh, I mean, what all things you are picking up, or your plans. If you can share a bit in uh, details. In Chrome OS, so yeah, we have caps, which is sandboxed, so you cannot really access it from from external net network. We don't use caps browsed. We have our own discovery. Uh, service which based our uh, MDNS of course. Mm, we have also our own printing dialog. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I w would like to mention that Chrome OS and Chromium, it's, it's uh, in general, it's o open source solution, so you can find it on the in internet. The, 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 the whole source code is, is on the internet. Uh, so yes, in general, we use uh, we we based on IPP on IPP protocol. Yes. Based on IPP protocol, uh, we also heavily based currently on PPD files for the older printers. I mean, majority of printers still need these PPD files. And yes, so we currently we are able like to install uh, printers in 70% of cases like driveless. In the other cases, it needs some user intervention. Still working on it. Okay, uh, thank you, Petra. Okay, so any other question or points to discuss? No. So for the scanner side of it, it's just mostly manpower at this point in time, and then the printer manufacturer, uh, the scanning manu the scanner, the people who've got the all one fun functionality, printer scanners need to be coming to the table and discussing things with people? Right, so uh, I think uh, both uh, are the cases, but okay. uh, at first, I mean, it will be great if we can have people contributing first and then parallelly we can approach uh, with the manufacturers as well. Because everybody takes care, I mean, takes part in the PWG body, I mean, they're in the PWG body, so if we can approach them, but if we do not have something on the software side, it will be hard as well. Yes, so perhaps it's a good way for, for uh, starting to motivate the manufacturer. 
So it's a good way to start to motivate the manufacturers perhaps to have already uh, the, the same driver and the scanner application framework in place so that the protocol is used in the client software. But uh, in general, manpower is a problem in open printing. <laughs> okay. So, uh, I think the next topic is a coffee break. Hey. <laughs> or, uh, we start after half an hour. So, so those of you who, are, uh, who, have, uh, who have called in, uh, so we have a break for half an hour. So, see you soon. By the way, don't forget to collect your open printing pens. They are lying on that corner. <laughs> Let's continue this session about open printing. It's, uh, we, t we are talking now about uh, printer and scanner applications. Already many years ago, <laughs> always, always uh, say, I think it's more or less about 10 years ago when Mike Sweet, author of CUPS, uh, deprecated PPD files. But back then, there was no, no alternative for them. PPD files are postscript printer description files. This format is in invented by Adobe to have a file containing the capabilities of a postscript printer in a standardized way so uh, that a, a client could easily know about the printer and uh, so uh, make available all options to the user, know about the paper sizes, about the non-printable margins and, and things like that. But the PPDs were on a CD which came with the printer. They, are so to say, they were, so to say, the driver for a postscript printer. Or you downloaded them uh, from the website of the manufacturer. And they were actually made for postscript printers. When back in, in 2000, Mike Sweet came out with CUPS, Printing worked all, uh, in Unix and Linux, worked all the way through PostScript. Everything which came in was uh, converted to PostScript by CUPS. And then this PostScript was, if the printer was not PostScript, converted to the printer's, lang to the printer's actual language. And as everything went through PostScript, Probably, therefore, Mike decided to use PPD files, even for the non-postscript printers, as a mean to describe printers and capabilities in CUPS. And later on, in the, in the Open Printing Summit 2006, this was the first of the annu annual printing summits uh, which I have organized with Open Printing, there, we decided on switching over from the PostScript-based printing workflow to the PDF-based uh, uh, printing workflow, meaning that everything which comes in is turned into PDF, and from PDF, it is turned into the printer's native language. But lacking an uh, alternative, we co continue to use PPD files to describe printer capabilities in CUPS. Some years later, Mike deprecated PPD files, telling PPD files will go away at a certain uh, point in time. Deprecating does not need, we take it away now, it needs. Beware, it will go away in some time. And due to lack of alternatives, it kept all the time and is still there. But in the Open Printing Summit 2018, more than one year ago, Mike came up with the idea of printer applications, 
a print and, and described it as it is an, uh, a daemon running and uh, this daemon emulates an IPP printer. It emulates it. It can emulate. It does not need to emulate. In it, uh, it does not need a network, and it emulates. It, it can simply emulate it on local host, and on some port different to CUPS. It emulates, and uh, so because usually CUPS is also there. And this emulation of an IPP printer is like usual IPP printers, advertising itself by a DNSSD, and it, it does not only emulating uh, uh, getting a job, but also emulating get printer attributes, t telling the client on demand about the capabilities. And on the other side, this daemon is connected to the printer, for example, to a parallel or USB printer, and the daemon itself is not only emulating the IPP printer on one side, but on the other side, it is filtering incoming jobs. The jobs are either in, in PDF or in one of the standard raster, raster formats. Filters this into the, into the PDL which the printer actually uses, and so, this serves as a printer driver, and as it answers get printer attribute requests, we need nowhere PPD. And as it does not, it does not like a PPD and filters which have to be put in certain directories of, uh, of CUPS, uh, in, in certain directories of the CUPS, uh, of the CUPS infrastructure, Let's, we, uh, we, we, we can, and, and connects only by a network connection, the CUPS and, and the printer application can be in different sandboxes. So we allow sandbox box packaging for printer drivers as the printer. And so this will be, Therefore, the format of printer drivers in the future, and as this is common, and as soon as this will be commonly uh, available and used, we we can expect then PPD support in CUPS actually goes away. Is then they are really not needed anymore, and then CUPS is not handling drivers, uh, really handling printer drivers anymore. CUPS is simply automatically discovering printers by, uh, by DNSSD, polling their capabilities, and with this uh, letting a, a print queue appear. And you are not actively uh, creating print queues and is assigning PPDs or needing some sophisticated uh, algorithms as I have implemented in system config printer to automatically assign drivers. And no, nowhere download PPDs anymore. And these printer applications, as they allow sandbox packaging, they can be put into a snap package and put into the, into the snap store and snaps have the nice capability of being Linux distribution independent. You can download them from any Linux distribution and they always work. So the printer manufacturer makes one snap, puts it in the snap store, and so we have a driver for all the Linux distributions. So we can, fi we, we can finally fulfill this dream of, of uh, Linux distribution independent driver packages. Some years ago, we, we, we tried it another way by the LSB, but it was very, very awkward, and only Epson has adopted uh, this, this, uh, this possibility. And later on, also uh, Debian and Ubuntu have quit 
the LSP do not support it anymore. And so the, the printer application snaps will get the will get the new the replacement for the driver for the Linux distribution independent printer driver packages. And everything which I told here now, this does not only work for printing. It works for everything IPP, especially also scanning and IPP system service. We have already talked about scanning and the problems with the drivers, and as we can make a printer application, we can make a scanner application. It emulates an IPP scanner, and, but in the back there we, we connect to the scanner and we take the, the commands which we receive via IPP and pass them on to the scanner. And also our, our scanner application knows about the capabilities of the scanner, so it can answer the get printer attributes request or perhaps it's a get scanner attributes request. There are some, some requests in the standard, in the IPP standard also for IPP driverless scanning to get the capabilities. And, and if we have a multifunction device, we can naturally uh, make simply one application which emulates an IPP multifunction device with all its functions, with scanning, printing, and whatever. Even we can emulate, we can also we can also emulate a web uh, web administration app, uh, interface. Or if we get more sophisticated, there's an also an IPP replacement for the web administration interface. It's called IPP system service. So a communication protocol where you can request from the from the IPP device. It's interface for administration and configuration. You can display it in a graphical dialog, let the user do all the settings, and the changes which the user does are, are sent back to the, to the device. You can even control from that that you want, if you want to do a fir firmware update. So you do not need to fear anymore, I have only Linux, how do I do a firmware update? This is also possible, and the, and the printer or scanner application to make it complete is also supposed to emulate the IPP system service sooner or later. So you can have, as a printer manufacturer, any, any nice sophisticated driver which does all, a, a lot of things. It gives the user a, a configuration interface. It allows scanning, it allows printing. You can abstract all this in IPP. You can do it in the, in the printer application. And so an, an IPP standard, compl uh, and then the user gets this application through the, through the Snap Store with any Linux distribution. And so he can use the device to its full extent. Because we have IPP, which is a protocol which has enough sophistication to do everything which you can do with your multifunction device. And you can also do it all with free software programming on your computer, making an, an uh, uh, printer application, and so a manufacturer can can make a sophisticated driver for any uh, for any multifunction device, and provide it in a snap, and the user can get it working in a snap. So. Uh, any questions about this? Anything, uh, any suggestions? Any volunteers who want to work on it? Okay, I just forgot this. Yes. So it's, it's supposed to be a demon, yes? Yes, yes, it's a demon. And this demon is, start, is supposed to start when you plug in the printer and to suppose 
to stop when you remove the pointer. Or if it's a network pointer, it's supposed to start if the pointer is discovered by, uh, by DNSSD and stopped if the pointer goes away. Oh, I mean, what if you have 1,000 printers on the network? Uh, I have 1,200 yes, yes. it's, it's the following. <laughs> at work. A pointer, a pointer application is not for generally every arbitrary pointer. It's for a certain model or a certain group of models. For example, Lexmark will publish, for example, a pointer application for a certain class of, of multifunction devices. And, and it depends, probably most, most, in most cases you have, uh, as we have, uh, we are now in the age of driverless, uh, uh, driverless printing, many network printers will not need a pointer application. So mostly these are local printers or legacy network printers. So it's not such a big amount of printers. And the printer application, naturally, it checks on the DNSSD record whether the printer is the model for which it is made for. So if you install the Lexmark printer application for this group of Lexmark printers, and there's somewhere in the network an Epson printer, it already sees that it's an Epson printer and, not, and does not connect to it. Yeah. Or there's another Lexmark printer which is an, of another group. It will also not connect to it. It will only connect if it's a printer for which it is made for. Yes, I mean, I know it's like a wrapper around the printer driver, yes? Yes. Non-standard, non-IPP non printer driver. Yes, yes. Uh, but so it must be installed by user, yes? By yes, hand. yes, it must be installed by the user. When we have a printer which does not do IPP driverless printing, we cannot get around that the user has to install a piece of software or that the piece of software comes with a distribution. But the, so, so, so we can, it is also possible that it happens that some more common uh, printer applications from manufacturers, if they are on the, under the right license, could also be could also be included in a Linux distribu distribution, like currently in, in classical form, HPLIP, for example, is included in the Linux distributions because it's a common driver package which is licensed appropriately so that it can be included in Linux distributions. I mean, in general, it's an idea how manufacturers can provide some drivers, yes? Yes, yes. universal. Yes, that's it. So if a manufacturer has a legacy printer and they have no possibility by a, by a firmware update to make this printer working driverless. For example, uh, uh, even uh, uh, also these local only, which, do, uh, which connect only by USB, there, there it is possi uh, possible. But if, uh, even in USB, you can use IPP <coughs> driverless printing because we have IPP over USB. But the printer needs to have the, the hardware uh, resources to take a firmware so which does IPP driverless printing. And if a printer ha does not have enough ha hardware support uh, uh, resources for such a sophisticated firmware so that you can only run it with a driver because the hardware is too weak, then the, the, then uh, the, the solution is the printer application. So on the computer, there's running the printer application. The computer is usually more, more computational power. And the, the manufacturer can provide it as a snap. And this snap can be downloaded by in, into all Linux distributions. Yeah, I mean, in general, by some kind And of also, the manufacturer has no problems with the license because is it is downloaded by a separate snap and not included in the Linux distribution, he does not need to fulfill the license requ requirements of the Linux distribution. Uh, okay, but is, is it specified somewhere? How, what, what kind of properties must have this kind of ah, driver? Yes. One thing is the manufacturer would need to inform the user somewhere 
that for this printer uh, uh, yes it, it must uh, be started printer the package. application is available and another thing is when printer applications are available uh, are made available through the snap store you know that users of a phone when they for example want to do some uh, for, for example rent a, sc uh, a scooter from lime they take their phone and enter lime in 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 the search bar of of the Android Play Store and find the Lime application, and so they they download it and can can rent the scooter, and so if a user has a, a Lexmark printer which is not IPP uh, uh, IPP driverless, then he would then he would go into the Snap Store and enter Lexmark there, and then he would hit uh, the Lexmark uh, printer applications. Uh, okay, but uh, how the demo would be started? <laughs> ah, yes. When he installs, he installs the application, and then with the application installed, the the demon is start automatically started. But it is in uh, it is only waiting for a signal that an appropriate printer is connected. I mean. For example, that by UDEV, it gets the signal that a printer is connected to uh, that a printer is connected to USB. It checks if this is the printer it's made f uh, the application is made for, and if so, it connects to the printer and starts emulating an IPP printer representing this printer. And about network, it it must yes, yes. discover through M MDNS. Yes, yes. When it's yes, when it's a network. When it's a network uh, printer for which this printer application is made, it listens on on uh, DNSSD and sees, oh, there's a printer. You, you must know that DNSSD is not only for IPP. There are also printers which support only uh, uh, socket 9100 or LPD or such old protocol. And they are advertising themselves by DNSSD also. And another thing is, if you want to make a printer application even for an older printer, which you have really manually by <laughs> to connect manually by entering its IP address, there's also a solution. You can make a printer application which right away starts an em 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 emulation of an IPP device, but this IPP device, it only, in the beginning, it only does IPP system service. So only provides an interface for configuration. And so you go into your printer setup tool, which supports IPP system service, and so it sees this device, which is IPP system service only, and there, and displays an interface, and this interface has a field for the for the the IP address. And then you enter the IP address. And as soon as you have entered the IP address of your printer, of the printer this uh, printer application is made for, the application connects, and the device it emulates expands to be also a printer. I mean, you know, it's like uh, the IPP is quite large. Uh, yes, yes, it's a very, very so sophisticated protocol. And and uh, the PWG has worked on it and developed it for 20 years now. Yes, but you know, you cannot enforce manufacturer to in invest too much cost in building driver, yes. yes. And if it must be simple enough, let's yes, just say, yes. to implement. Yes, the thing for the new printers, the way to go, the standard it's IPP, way to go yeah, is I IP to make the printer IPP yes. by itself. The printer application is only a way to get around with which printers with which need a driver, which are mainly legacy printers. 
but it can be that some manufacturers would for some specialty printers also go the way to, uh, ha to, to uh, work with the printer application. But the way to go, the way which is recommended to the manufacturers for new printers is to make them IPP, uh, IPP driverless by themselves. Uh, so I had a quick question, which was, um, how does this work when you might have uh, multiple drivers for a single printer, as has happened in the past? Yes. One thing is, if you have multiple drivers, there's probably one, one which is the most sophisticated. So the manufacturer, when he provides a printer application, something which should emulate an IPP printer, which should work as, as well as possible, he would select the most sophisticated protocol <coughs> with which the printer can do the best and nicest and, uh, things and base the printer application on that. Uh, what about uh, distributions, where, which at the moment ship a large number of... Uh, of legacy drivers and, again, essentially let the user try and pick between them. Uh, Will they be expected to use this technique as well? Uh, yes, distributions, as, as, at least as in some, uh, when in some years CUPS stops, uh, stops uh, uh, support for PPD files, are also support, supposed to use printer applications. For printer applications, as they are all in all, simply a program running on the computer, you are not required to put them into a snap. You can also put them into a Debian package for, if you want, for example, if you want to include a, a printer application in a distribution. And a printer application, one thing we have already started in this year's Google Summer of Code, to make a printer application SDK, a print application framework, with which you can pick uh, w uh, legacy drivers consisting of filters and PPDs into a print application. With this, you could easily, for example, uh, put Splix or Gutenprint quickly into a print application. So a distribution packager could, when he had a distro, and this distro would, would use a cup version which does not uh, support PPDs anymore. He could use this framework to package Gutenprint, for example. So we are prepared for that. And we can even make, th we can even make it with a time more sophisticated. For example, if you would need manual work if you could not automatically connect a print, uh, make a printer uh, application which automatically connects to a printer and selects the correct driver, you could always add a user interface to a, to a, a printer application you, uh, by, by, uh, by means of IPP system service. In this user interface, this could also have some options to select drivers, to select printers, and so I think you could, with printer applications, you could <coughs> solve all the legacy problems. In that sort of scenario, are you expecting... You can, you can even put uh, the, the back, back end part of, sis, of system config printer, which automatically selects drivers, you could even stuff into a printer application too. Okay, I think that's answered the question. Uh, yeah, I have one question. First, maybe you should make the scope, I think, in my, uh, according to my <laughs> experience, you should make the scope maybe more na narrow, yes, if you add to, to, to many options, to many possibilities to this, yeah, printer applications, it will be just, uh, the mess will be larger and larger, yes. You, 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 you cannot bombard users with more and more options, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, we, the, the, the intention is natu naturally to make the printer applications as automatic as possible. They, they automatically discover their printers and, and select the correct driver and, and, the, and, and then emulate the IPP printer. 
Uh, okay, so I mean, the, as I understood, the model is that we have like a caps, yes, and we installed some driver, yes. I mean, this printer application. Yes, yes. And Hub. it will uh, announce itself on the lo local host interface. Yes, yes. Uh, on the local, yes, on on the on local host. For yes. example, caps is on local host port six three one. And when you start the printer application, then appears a local host uh, port 8000, for example. It advertises, advertises itself by the NSSD, so it's no problem that the port is not yeah, I mean, so 631. One problem I, I, I can see here that you, you have one printer and it's de detected, tw de detected twice, one by the driver and one by, by the caps. Yes, yes, one thing is you, mu you need you need in a distribution do the correct organization. For example, not provide the same driver both by a printer application and, and the classical way because then the printer could be discovered twice, once as a local printer and once as a network printer. Mm, yes, but if you run CAPS, so CAPS browse will discover the printer. Yes, yes. If, even if it CAPS, cannot CAPS print to it. Itself, yes. CAPS itself discovers driverless network printers simply when it is running. Only driverless network printers can no print applications. It discovers every printer that uh, announce itself of MD MDNS, yes. yes but it yes. cannot print to, 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 to them because they are not IPP everywhere. Yes, yes but uh, uh, the, the IPP driverless printer, it makes immediately available yes. automatically. Yes. But for the other network printers, it can also discover by DNSSD. You see them only if you go into uh, the CUPS web interface and, and select Add Printer. Okay. It does not do it by itself. And when you see in the distribution that print queues were already uh, created by themselves for years, this is because there is uh, there is UDEF, and UDEF calls system config printer, and system config printer sets up the queue for you. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Okay, so if you have two the same printers, yes, connected to the internet, you, you have two demons on, or, or one demon? Uh, when, you have, when you have two very different printers... Different the same printer. Ah, two printers of the same model. This you can handle by one printer application. It, can, it, it can, for example, uh, uh, emulate two IPP printers on two different ports. Okay. So if you've got something like, let's say, um, a print server, which you're using to perhaps um, serve up multiple legacy printers, would yes. the print server itself then start having to use up a lot of um, um, uh, enumeration for each one of its printers? So for every printer, you're going to have like another, uh, or the applications are going to be serving up another port to itself so that it can see each one of these should we say legacy network printers? We have enough ports that it's no, no problem. And these printers only need to be visible to the local, to the server itself, as the server itself is running CUPS and the sharing is done by CUPS. But the application on the other end? The printer application could on all also share by itself. You do not need to nail it to only only advertise to local hosts. And if you give the printer application an IPP system service interface, you could even comfortably uh, uh, configure the, the printer application to where it broadcasts it print its printer. Would the expectation be that printer applications themselves should be, I guess, um, uh, uh, what's the word, asynchronous, essentially? What? Uh, should printer applications themselves be asynchronous? Uh, what do you mean? They are, they are simply running uh, as a daemon. 
Uh, um, because if you've got one application which can serve up multiple ports because yes, it's representing yes, this, multiple yeah, yes, printers. Yes, this is asynchronous. It would uh, start threads and and then they are running several threads, one per printer, or if it does a task, for example, it, pr it prints a job, it could uh, start a thread for printing the job to the printer while the main thread is still is listening for more commands from the client. <coughs> How you program them internally, it's up to the developer of, of the printer application. I mean the only thing we require from the printer application that it it correctly supports IPP. I mean the, my concern is, is uh, my concern uh, here is that we duplicate a lot of functionality from CAPS here, yes. Why do you need CAPS if you have full IPP on the printer application? Yes, one thing is we, uh, to avoid duplication of CAPS, we could, for example, use the CAPS library for the IPP implementation in the printer application. So the, co the same code is used. And uh, so we do not rewrite all the implementation of IPP as we have a library for it. But you need HTTP server, yes? Yes, So yes. it's like driver with HTTP server and, and several, you know, support for several IPP function. It's, it's, it must be yes. quite large, yes. I, I, I mean, you know, that the cost of building such kind of driver, it's, it's non-trivial, yes. Yes, one thing but is a driver has always to connect in a way to CUPS. And we need uh, some interface. And what we need yes. is an interface which does not work by having a program located in a certain place in the file system when, where another program expects it because this defeats sand, sandbox packaging. We need a communication between different programs which works either by network protocols, IP protocols like IPP, or by things like DBus. Yes, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, I think that it's the, the direction is is good in general. Yes, you 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 need something which which provide which behaves as a printer. Yes. Yes. But maybe uh, like uh, try to like uh, define some minimal capabilities that the driver must have to be rec recognized by CAPS. Yes, as as a printer and that you don't have to implement all this stuff which is required by, by full IPPS. Yes. Uh, so from a security perspective, won't having lots of these little demons potentially be an issue on things which are like multi-user systems, for example, because now where does the security come from? Uh, because you've got the, you've got, you could potentially just talk to the printer applications directly now. You don't have to talk to the uh, CUPS application at the top. Yes, one thing is IPP has security implement has sec uh, several security facilities. For example, you can have encrypted transfer. You can have also pr uh, printing with a, with a password, so that, for example, the uh, the cu the CUPS is sending the jobs with a password so that on, only CUPS can send the, the jobs to the, print, to the IPP printers or IPP print applications. IPP supports all these uh, facilities for security. Yeah, <coughs> so you have the facility to, you know, put in the pin while printing. So, uh, so IPP has those things. Like earlier, it was uh, handled through driver, where in your driver, you can uh, give the option for a confidential print. So user puts in a pin. Uh, you go to your printer in your panel, you put in that pin, and then you get your print job. So here now, this is this uh, with driverless printing, this will be handled by IPP. So IPP, you know, uh, pin attributes and all these things are there. Uh, would you say that that would be the default or because I'm thinking now like a general user just trying to get an out of the box experience, would they be setting up or would it be automatically set up some sort of 
protection from the main cut server to the um, to the um, uh, the printer application essentially because to prevent like rogue programs he isn't on mean, the right. meaning uh, that for example that the user cannot directly print on the IPP printer application so on in cups for example to so on uh, 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 accounting see uh, job accounting I mean uh, this confidential print is not a default option so you might not always want your uh, you know to uh, go for confidential uh, print so that's a user choice so if you want, you can go for a confidential uh, print. A else, you just do a control P. Yes. One thing is also, if you have a printer application, it would be by default only uh, only uh, broadcast itself, uh, advertise itself on a local host, uh, and not on the whole network. And if you have a print server, this print server, users cannot log in on, on it. They, they only see the, uh, the, the, the cups on port 631 of this print server. And this cups is advertising its queues, its cups queues, to the network. The printer application which are running on it are not visible on the outside. So the user can print on the print on the printers on on the print server only through cups because only cups is visible from the outside. I mean, the other pro problem is with like security on the level of o operating system. Yes, because these printer applications can can be like third party uh, software. Yes. 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 It can be closed or proprietary, and now we would have to give it permission for network yes. stack? Yes, <laughs> manufacturers are supposed to uh, deliver the printer application with a default configuration which, which lets them only broadcast on local host. And only if the user wants the printer application uh, directly share the printer. Then he can uh, 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 modify the configuration of the printer application to uh, to a broadcasting to a wider part of the network. Okay, can we somehow like 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 you can configure a physical IPP printer where you can get into the web interface, and in the web interface, say uh, uh, it should broadcast, it should be available on the whole local network or it should be available only on this list of IPs and so on. Okay, can we make sure that it won't talk to anything else than the printer? <laughs> yeah, you mean that the application on its printer and uh, that, it, that someone could, uh, could uh, put out, uh, publish a, a, yes. a malicious printer can application. Can be just some kind of there, trial, This yeah. is the super printer driver for your good old Lexmark uh, 5000 inkjet printer. And uh, in, in reality, it is not uh, such a thing, but a thing which is, uh, which is spying the network or, or something like that. Doing some task which, which is completely independent of the task it's advertised for, for being for. This naturally, this does not only happen with printer applications. It can happen with any kind of software. There were all already published on the on the Google Play Store's uh, applications, mainly games, which do completely different things in the background. By the way, Lexmark is no more into inkjet. What? <laughs> Lexmark is no more into inkjet. <laughs> yes, I know. I, I simply gave a very, very old printer as, as an example. It was a printer of the time when I started with uh, open printing back, back in 2000. So I think now you would not even get ink anymore on eBay for, the, <laughs> for that <laughs> And that's true. Anything else? Do you have some prototype? <laughs> or it's of, of print applications, yes. We have on open printing one of 
our, of this year's Google uh, Summer of Code students has made the framework for converting uh, legacy printer drivers into a printer application. Oh, yeah. And there is also an example inside for HPLIP, but only for printing with HPLIP, not for scanning. I think uh, the student is there uh, in the call, and I mean, he has called in. I don't know if he's, uh, so it's a Dheeraj, so he is already there. He's listening to all our discussions. So uh, very soon, we will probably be organizing a demo on uh, this stuff, what he has worked on uh, in printer applications. So maybe I can uh, invite you guys who, who all will be interested. So you get a better clarity and understanding of how the printer application works or regarding the prototype, uh, how, is, how it is. So Dheeraj, are you, are you listening to us? Dheeraj, <coughs> are you there? Let me check. Ah, it's this letter. Hi. Hi. So, you have, I will just try to yeah, put so you on mic. give you a mic so that where is this? There's a cable okay, yeah, with, a, a you have to put this to the headphone jack of the, yes, on lap, laptops still have headphone jacks, not like uh, phones. Microphone? Uh, no, no, uh, headphones, yes. Okay, uh, Dheeraj, can you try to speak something? Dheeraj, are you there? Yes, I tell. Yes, you are live on air now. Okay. So. Yeah, Dheeraj, uh, so we have an audience over here. If you can uh, briefly explain them what you have done uh, in the printer applications prototype. So uh, what I'm doing is, so in, in the framework, uh, we, uh, I have made a framework which particularly checks. Uh, it, uh, it is particularly uh, particularly developed for the snap package. So uh, when you are installing a printer driver package, you can just install. It's uh, simply like installing it in some uh, custom directory. So it just picks up the PPD and the driver files from those custom directories and uh, the and the daemon basically checks. Uh, has a service which detects the printers on uh, various interfaces or uh, uh, cups backends uh, like the USB backend and if you have a uh, particular uh, driver package like HP Lip, so it also have its own backends uh, HP and HP fix so it picks all the all the printers which it supports through the backends uh, so it takes all the printers which it, uh, which it is supporting and tries to find PPD files for those printers. Uh, and those PPD files are uh, detected using, uh, which we have installed in the custom directories, which uh, uh, as I said earlier, if we are installing the printer driver in a particular uh, custom directory. So it picks up the PPD files uh, using, in, uh, from those custom directories, and attaches them with the IPPE printer utility of CUPS package. So, uh, using those PPD files, we can uh, we can provide the IPPE printer utility, the device URI of the printer, and the PPD file. And the IPPE printer utility utility takes care of everything. Uh, I mean, the uh, advertising it on the local host and uh, setting up the print queue and uh, the printing itself. And we just have to add uh, one more uh, command. Uh, the IPPE printer requires a particular command uh, through which it prints, uh, it, it invokes the printing command. So in that command we uh, use, we detect which all filters we need, uh, we need to apply on the given file for uh, given job and then send it to the backend. So that is taken care by the IPPE printer. We just have to write a custom command and if we have the, uh, if a particular printer driver already have filters, of, uh, filter and uh, the backend for a particular uh, printer, we don't have to worry about the framework uh, already takes care of everything. Okay, uh, thanks Dheeraj. So anyone, uh, any questions to Dheeraj? You have a question? 
So I had a last general question, which was, um, will things like Windows network print or printing to Windows network printers uh, work through a printer application as well? As in, would there, it, would there be an application for doing Windows printing? It would be an idea to make a printer application for that. We don't have one yet. Right, uh, so uh, printing in Windows, uh, it's, it's a different way altogether, and uh, here it's different. So, so it's, it's a different uh, I mean, technology and uh, process. Yes, yes, you wouldn't have to make a <coughs> printer application, which is a client for uh, Windows network printing, and which discovers uh, the Windows network printers available and then converts to an emulated IPP printer. It, is, it would be possible to make this. One, would, one simply would need someone who makes it. OK, so any questions? Any other questions? No? So till I think we need to move to the next slide. By the way, thanks, Ziraj. Yes. We are okay. going now Bye, to the printer setup tools. <coughs> Thank you, Dirash. Okay. Bye. Yes, yes. Bye. You, you, Bye, you can everybody. stay. You can stay in the line. We are talking about printer setup tools, and there we will also see some further ideas which we would have to implement in printer applications in the future. Okay. So uh, currently, printer setup tools, they are, they are doing the following. When you open a printer setup tool, you see the queues which exist. You can, uh, uh, and you, you can right click them or click on an options button and then set, do, do set, set the default settings for each of the queues like duplex and paper size and so on. And you can also uh, select a queue which would be the default printer. And most important, there's a button, uh, add a new printer. And when you click it, it will at first look for what printers are available. It will discover network printers, it will it will discover USB printers and so on. It, it does it usually by calling all, all the backends of CUPS in discovery mode, and each backend dis dis discovers the printer for which it is made for. And uh, then it goes through, through some uh, nice algorithms of, of uh, system config printer to find out which of the discovered printers are perhaps physically the same, and then it lists them. So there's already one sophisticated complex step which we need for making uh, the classic form of printing without IPP driverless printing user-friendly. And so we, we have the list now. Then the user selects which is my printer, oh, this is this one. Sometimes he gets to the problem that the algorithm does not hit well and perhaps his printer appears twice. Then he has to think which one is the right one. And next step, he clicks on the printer. Then system config printer is uh, using some the make and model information of the printer, which the printers already provide for years to auto-select a driver, also through some sophisticated complex algorithms often. And uh, it connects the driver and creates the queue when you are lucky, when you are not, not lucky, when the algorithms do not find the driver, or when the printer does not provide its make and model info, then you go through dialogues for make, model, and then for different drivers, and so on and you have to select, and then you get the chance to print, print uh, a test page, and if you are lucky, the test page comes out as you wish it, and then you say, okay, and you have a print, print view. A task uh, which, which is a little bit awkward depending on the printer. And 
Also, the sophisticated algorithms of system config printer are also triggered automatically by UDEF in modern distro, so that uh, when you plug in a printer, a queue is set up automatically when the printer is supported well and the driver is installed. The distros ship a lot of drivers, waste a lot of space with this. And then you have a print queue. It looks nice, but it's not IPP driverless printing, and it's a lot. Uh, it's a lot of work from the from the developers behind this, so that this actually works. And this is, as we know, printer setup tools. And now with IPP driverless printing, there will be a lot of has to be a lot of change in printer setup tools. We will probably keep this main window which, which lists the available printers and where you can define one which, which would be the default printer and where you can also uh, define the preferences of option settings which you, which you want to use. But one thing is add a new printer. In most cases you don't need in most cases, the printers come up, out automatically due to IPP driverless printing. Or if, you, if the printer needs a driver, when you have the, the printer application snap installed, then the printer appears automatically like an IPP network printer. Perhaps what we need here for the printer which needs a driver, we would need something which and not only for printers, for hardware in general, the snap store would need something where uh, snaps, snaps could be, would be associated with hardware to, to uh, allow for things. We, we should uh, make a fe feature request to snap, which would allow that if a certain hardware is detected, the installation of a certain snap is triggered. This would be also. <laughs> Also a nice thing, we must, we, this we would need uh, to work out with SNAP. And so the printer setup tool would, does not really actually for, for modern printers and for printer applications not need this add printer wizard. But one thing which printer setup tools do not have Note also that, uh, that in on certain systems like, like Apple iPhone, there is not even a printer setup tool. And what a printer setup tool does not have, but which we will, will probably need in the future, is support for IPP system service. I've already talked sometimes here now about IPP system service. It's the next importance uh, uh, IPP service after printing and scanning. It's a way to connect, to configure a printer through IPP. It does all the nice IPP way. If you want to get configuration interface for a printer, UI for configuring a printer, formally, they had solved it by using a web browser and the printer's web interface, but what you, need, what you needed here, you needed a web browser, and you got a, uh, a user interface from the printer manufacturer, completely different from manufacturer to manufacturer, and perhaps it could even have incompatibilities with some browsers. And also a browser is not the perfect user interface, as you can, you have several operations which would a little bit interfere with a good, good user interface. For example, if you are in a wizard uh, of, of the admin, web admin interface of a printer for setting something up inside the printer, and then you, in the middle of the way you, you press the back button of the browser, it could somehow uh, somehow uh, bring this, uh, this uh, uh, sequence out of track and so some entered configuration data can get lost. So IPP system service is a way to, 
a standardized way to get to configure printers via IPP. So if so our printer setup tool would get for, for each of the existing queues the, the option the option uh, configure printer. If you click on that, it would open a printer configuration <coughs> interface. And in IPP system service, this means the client, the printer setup tool, is polling by IPP the configuration interface of the printer. And the printer answers it, it back, all the information of its configuration interface. Then the, the client is drawing the UI for this configuration interface, and the user can play with it, can, he can configure the printer. And the printer setup tool is sending commands back to the printer for every configuration operation the user has done, and so the printer gets configured. And the interface has the look and feel of, of the user's printer setup tool, of the user's uh, uh, graphical interface, for example, of the user's GNOME theme. And, and so the user can nicely configure the printer. There are standards for, for, for configuration elements, and so, and so if the user so, so if the user has printers from different manufacturers, the, diff the interfaces do also not get too different. In this way, the, printer can, the user can easily configure his printer, tell which, uh, which clients should be allowed to access the printer, which paper is in which tray, and he can even download and install firmware for the printer. In this way, the, the problem of firmware update gets standardized and does not require uh, proprietary Windows applications anymore, which means under Linux, we are finally able to update the firmware of a printer, which, which does not update the firmware completely by itself. I have a printer which updates its firmware completely by itself. You do not need to do anything for that. Sometimes suddenly it has a new firmware, or sometimes suddenly I saw that the printer rebooted without me doing anything, and what, ha what happened is that the printer has updated its firmware. So this is a one important part which uh, the printer setup tool of the future needs, where we need naturally someone who implements it. Yes, I'm always forgetting to advance this year. Because I'm used to, to have it all visible at once. And, and Avik has very uh, very shortly before <laughs> our meeting, he has uh, uh, modified all the slides that, uh, that each line is, is, appears only when you, pu uh, when you press the next. Yeah, I, had, I added some animations. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Anything? Any th any questions? Anyone is here who is who is developer of something in the snap workflow? Anyone is, has some idea uh, on uh, what he's doing with printers and what he's missing in uh, printer setup tools, and I did not talk about that.
Yes, and as, as usual, we will open uh, big Google Summer of Code projects for the parts we want to have developed. Also, also volunteers for mentors are also welcome. So it so goes oh, now. Well, quickly, just a quick can, question. Can yeah, yeah, we've been talking about right. snaps. Is there any, what's happening in the uh, Red Hat space? Uh, and one thing is, as far as I know, you can install the SnapD on any distro. Okay. So it is. It should also be available for Red Hat. And I think on the Snap forums, I have also already seen complain, complaints from, from Red Hat users. Okay. And uh, on SUSE? Well, yes. On SUSE, I think it would be the same thing. Okay. Um, have there been any interactions with the Open Embedded folk? Open embedded, OE and Yocto. Uh, no, we we specifically didn't have an interaction with them, but we can. <laughs> okay, so we move on to the next one. I think uh, that's mine. Yeah. Yes, it's now about three D printing. Do you want to have this mic here? Hello, yeah. Now you have pressed it in advance. You have pressed the next button in advance. OK, yes. uh, thanks, Till. So here uh, we are almost at the uh, you know, end part of the presentation. So uh, from the morning, we have been talking about driverless printing, printing in, uh, in, you know, uh, in pa paper and all these things. But uh, I, I'm sure most of you are aware that we have uh, 3D printing uh, in picture. So there are many companies have already designed their 3D printer. So any of you, uh, have you ever tried to print anything in a 3D printer? You have used? OK, great. So a couple of you. So can anyone uh, describe that uh, how, how uh, you print in 3D printer, uh, starting from the design to the print? Printing. Can can anyone from the audience uh, just describe? Nobody else. Well, I model my models in uh, FreeCAD. I slice them with slicer. I put them on an SD card. I put it in the printer, and they print. Right. So, uh, the great. Th thanks for the details. So, anybody following a different method? What he explained is uh, he creates his models. He slices it puts it in a in a uh, drive uh, in a sd card uses that to print so anyone doing 3d printing in a different way no okay so exactly so that's how uh, 3d printing is done today you you sorry you first design your uh, model uh, you get an stl file or something then you slice it in layers because as a 3d because 3d printer you know prints in layers so layer one, layer two. So it's all the layers which uh, get attached and create the model. You had a question? For, for FDM, but uh, not for, not for the, um, okay, the, the maybe we can have you can have the mic. But that's more for FDM than it is for like the the resin. I think it's called FFF printing. Uh, FDM. Yeah, fused okay. plastic. What where you melt and right, layer the right, plastic right. versus. Right. I, I designed my 3D printer a couple of months back uh, out of the open source uh, technologies available using Marlin firmware, and uh, I had designed the hardware myself. So all I was doing is uh, this thing. I was creating an STL model, and then I was uh, slicing it using the softwares which are uh, already available. So uh, for those who are not aware, it's like once you create the model, you have to slice it. Right, so slice means basically uh, you are instructing the nozzle of the 3D head how it should move. So you have a base layer; it, it's it's like a icing of the cake. You have cream, uh, you have you put in the cream, uh, and you press in. You ha write happy birthday or happy anniversary. So 3D printing is similar. You have a hot nozzle. You put in the plastic, and you move the nozzle. So it prints one layer. Then again, on top of it, it prints the next layer and the next layer, and then how the model is formed, so uh, model is uh, designed. 
so you create the design then slice it through your slicer software and finally you feed the g code into this printer okay so and and it starts printing <coughs> so this is the process this is way uh, the way how it is done today so we we want to modernize it or we want to make things easier like we we have developed our uh, you know uh, driverless printing uh, for for 2d printing we want to do the same thing for 3d printers so we we need collaboration we need people to contribute more on this space so what we are proposing is uh, a filter like we have our pdf to pdf filter or tclm filters in linux today uh, that's mentioned through open printing if we can have a filter that can remove the slicing process you know so here it's like you have an stl you slice it convert it into a g code and then print if we have an have a filter you just uh, open the STL model, maybe in Linux, and you just do a control T. In between, uh, internally, it will slice up things and send it to your printer. So life becomes easier. So that is something which we are proposing. So yeah, um, there are reasons you might want to slice it yourself because the layer adhesion that you'd have when you 3D print matters. Like the strength from one direction to the, right. the other matters. So you either would have to take that into account when you design your model, or you need to have some options in this translation. Yeah, so by basically it'll be, so currently you do a sales and you s save it, then you open and slice it, then you tweak some parameters, load some presets, then you throw G code, and then you print it. And in this way, it'll be like, you know, you do the sale, you press Control P, then you tweak some parameters, then you lower some presets, and then you, so that's not much easier from my point yeah, of view. It's just like, like a proper pattern. You, you cannot, right, you right, cannot, right, you can <laughs> avoid the w way of saving intermediate G-code file, but you cannot avoid tweaking the parameters for every model that you are, you are printing and by law doing all this stuff. Mm -hmm. You still have to do that. Uh, uh, <laughs> I thought that yeah. has to do with the speaker. Uh, yeah, that one. So, okay, thanks. Uh, first of all, I remember a presentation uh, two or three years ago uh, talking about the same uh, at the uh, Red Hat organized conference, uh, DevConf CZ, which was happening in Brno. So you might take a look at that. Okay. Uh, uh, what the others were saying that uh, there's the um, a big part of um, of this is the um, interactive part where you have to tweak the model, tweak the settings, and everything, and yeah, um, <laughs> just it just goes into feedback. So uh, the big part is that there is lots of manual work before you can actually sli slice it, and uh, I would posit that. The automating that would take uh, artificial intelligence to get any any valuable results because there are things like adding supports and uh, yeah, determining the direction, but uh, that's definitely something that would be good to, to do. But yeah, be be before you print, I mean, using the slicer software, you can do a lot of improvisations, like in which layer, I mean, how much amount of quantity you want to infuse or how much strength you need to give to a particular position. I agree to it. So my main point is like if we can integrate things, instead of doing things uh, in different softwares, if we can integrate things uh, in, in a, if we can integrate things all together, so that makes all of our job easier. So we, our main aim is to ma uh, make it as easier as uh, 2D printing without losing any of the functionalities or, or uh, things. So. That's that's something which I wanted to open for I mean open up for discussion so that uh, we we see uh, some uh, better things tomorrow. Yeah. So you you ha wanted to say. Oh. So have you at all looked at something like Octoprint? 
Sorry? Have you looked at anything like Octoprint? No. So no. I know for, uh, so I have a Prusa Mark III. Okay. And um, essentially it's a Raspberry Pi that you can add to the back of your controller board. And it enables you to do all kinds of web things and you essentially can transfer the STL over. And I think it does slicing on there. I, don't ha I haven't used it, but I think oh. it does something similar, but you need essentially a smart device to assist you. So maybe that's something that you would be recommending to 3D printer manufacturers. That's a nice thing, so I didn't know about it. So you, you, you had any, any other question? So I don't know, I can just repeat what yeah, yeah, sure. others were saying that, yes, what your suggestion, it'll make things easier, but it's not where the complexity is. So you'll optimize the very minor part that nobody thinks is difficult at all. The difficult part is you're not making it easier, you just uh, completely ignore the complexity, the main complexity. And what you optimize is, well, nobody, nobody cares. So, so uh, which part do you think is the most complex or hazardous? Tweak, tweaking the slicer parameters to actually slice the model the way you want it to get the, well, but, but it's not that different good results. I mean, but it's not that different than a printer where you say what black level you want is the, you know, how many printers you want in a 3D print, what black level you want, whether yes. you want monochrome. Yes, but how, how, how often do you tweak your printer parameters before printing? How often do you tweak your slicer parameters? I think I was going well, my, my printer recently gone crazy and I was tweaking this level of black and all this stuff and gamma curves. I did it once in like many years. Mm -hmm. With slicer, you, you need to do that every time. But I think he's going for more of a perfect world kind of thing that maybe the AI <laughs> could figure it out and go, oh, well, it only needs to be two layers at here and it could be 10 over here because it needs the strength. Is that what you're proposing? All oh, right, right, somewhere uh, similar. So basically, I want, I want to add that a little. So basically, 3D printing at this moment is not a solved problem. If we, ca if we, if we compare uh, laser printers to 3D printers, uh, the laser printers are, well, it's, it's a relatively solved problem. There are, at the, when the first laser printers were introduced, I believe there would be difficulties to figure out how much toner you use, what kind of voltages you use, et cetera, to, to get the toner over to the paper and things like that. But it was a relatively easy problem to solve. It was basically, well, two dimensions. With 3D printer, there are so many parameters that it's, uh, for every print, it has to be different and uh, there are many, many parameters to solve, and you cannot remove the human by default yet. But right. Yeah. Uh, there, there is more diversity which is being added. I mean, a few days back, I was uh, seeing a video in YouTube where uh, some university in UK, what they're trying to do is somebody gets admitted to a hospital with, with some problem in an artery in the heart. So a scanner is scanning that particular area and they are feeding it to the 3D printer and the 3D printer uh, creates uh, an artery of that size and shape uh, using human cells. Mm -hmm. So, and the doctor just needs to implant it. So maybe tomorrow we have a, a my clone will be there. Somebody, I'll be giving a presentation somewhere. Somebody will create my clone <laughs> from my picture. So yeah, uh, so uh, maybe uh, in the future, uh, if we can have a common PDL or or if we if we tell uh, it as object description language ODL, uh, some some uniformity. So I don't know. I mean, this, these are all the things which needs a lot of discussion and uh, what it should improve and uh, so things like that. Uh, PWG has already defined some standards for uh, 3D printing. So like uh, PWG is the printing walkways group. So uh, they, uh, they define the printing standards. They have already like IPP driverless printing and IPP everywhere. These kind of standards were, uh, you know, developed by PWG. Similarly, they have it for 3D printing as well. Maybe uh, tomorrow we will have a driverless 3D printer, <laughs> like we have a driverless 2D printer. So all these things are like we are proposing. We uh, maybe open printing. We can. I mean, if somebody is interested, uh, we can collaborate and work on something. So 
that's it. Before we uh, move on to the closure, I mean, if any any one of you want to discuss on any points uh, that we discussed today, be it with respect to 2D printing or 3D printing or uh, something that gives you pain while printing, which we can resolve, or if you want to, uh, you know, help us uh, grow pre open printing or some. If you have any further questions uh, or anything, you can uh, email us uh, here. Okay? Yes, if you want to vo volunteer to uh, be a part of open printing, maintain uh, projects, create new stuff, implement uh, uh, things we need, fix bugs, triage bugs. And if anything is not working out in Linux while well, you print, shoot us a mail. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, ladies and gentlemen.